Thank you, very, thank you very much, Ben. Um, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Emil van der Zanden. I'm a senior student here at the International School of The Hague. Um, I would like to start today with a very short story. A few weeks ago, I talked to a 12-year-old kid, and I asked him, what do you want to be when you grow up? He told me he wanted to be an engineer. Now, I smiled, because I too want to be an engineer. But then I asked him, what are you waiting for? You can be an engineer now. Now, while this might sound really strange, that I'm telling a 12-year-old kid he can be an engineer, the definition of an engineer is someone who designs, builds, or maintains structures or engines. So what was stopping this kid? What was stopping this kid from doing what he loved to do? What was stopping him from accomplishing his dreams? Now, I'm here to tell you today that I think it's all about opportunity. It is all about opportunity. That is what our world revolves around, opportunities. Now, I'm gonna tell you the stories about the opportunities I've had in my life so far, and I hope I can inspire you, some, some of you today. When I was 12, I was offered to be in the secondary student council in my former school, the Vientiane International School in the Lao PDR. I took this opportunity. I took this opportunity. This is the first lesson. When you're given an opportunity, you take it. Now, while that might sound really simple, you will be surprised by the amount of people who turn down great chances for stupid reasons. I don't feel like it. I don't have enough time. Too much work. If you're given an opportunity, you take it. Now, a year later, I was, there was an opening within this council, and the position was sponsorship coordinator. It was all about fundraising. Now, the problem was this position was for slightly older students, 16, 17 year olds, and I was only 13. But I didn't let this stop me. I did not let this stop me. I persuaded them to give me this job until they eventually did. This is the second lesson. Make every opportunity yours. Don't let anything stop you. Make it yours. Now, while these opportunities I had there were really great, I had a lot of opportunities down the road for me. But no road is straight and flat. They all have bumps and curves. Later that year, my parents decided to move to the Netherlands. Now, all those opportunities I had, they were pulled from right under my feet. But that's life. That's life. We have to move on. And while those two thi things I just said about making opportunities and taking opportunities are really important, it's not as important as the third thing I'm about to tell you. When life kicks you, make sure it kicks you forward. That's important. I, many opportunities were taken from me, but I moved forward. I moved forward, and we all have to do that. We all have to move forward. And this leads me to the third thing I wanted to teach, to teach you today. Don't wait for opportunities. Create them yourself. Do not wait, create. And that's really important. And this is the story of how I did that. When I first moved here to Netherlands, I wasn't given many opportunities, especially not in the field I love the most, engineering. Until one day, we had to do a school project. And I built a remote-controlled solar-powered car. You can see it in the picture up there. I made that completely from scratch. It's remote-controlled, solar-powered, and what you see in white, the shell, well, I made that completely out of fiberglass. A couple of weeks later, my supervisor for this project, Mr. Rick Von Vliet, he came up to me and he said, Emil, let's build a real full-size car that a student can drive. No, I thought he was completely crazy. I thought he was completely nuts. Sir, you want me to build a car that a student can drive? Are you crazy? But, but later on, I realized the true genius behind it. Sometimes ideas come from the strangest place. And that is when I created my own opportunity. That is when I created Silverback Engineering. Silverback Engineering, what is it? It is a team here in the International School of The Hague. And our goal is to build a car. We are going to build a car. Now, we will, the goal of this car is to travel as far as possible on one liter of gasoline. We will race this car at the annual Shell Eco Marathon, a race held every year in America, Europe, and Asia. This is an elite race. All, the competitors are mainly universities, and they are very serious about it. The top teams, well, they can travel several thousand kilometers on one liter of gasoline. That is not a mistake. Several thousand kilometers on one liter of gasoline. That is amazing. That is brilliant. And that is what I wanted to start here. 
So I did that. I created my own, own opportunity. I did that. The first thing I had to do, I had to talk to school management. I had to persuade them that it was, the better, it was better for the school to build a car. Now, that's not easy. It's not easy to go to management and tell them that you want to strap a fellow student into a car built by 16, 17 year olds with a tank of gasoline on the back. It's not easy. But eventually they said yes. Eventually they said yes. So we moved on. Now, I handpicked every single person in my team. Together, we all have the same goal. Build a car, successfully compete. Now, after I built this team, we went to the Shell Eco Marathon last year. We visited the top teams, we talked to the top teams, and we saw how complicated this competition was. It wasn't gonna be easy, but that didn't stop us. That just hyped us up, that just pumped us up. We were ready to get this thing going. Now, I can go on a lot about the outside of the car, but what really intrigues people is, sorry, is the outside, sorry, that's what really intrigues people. The inside, all the technical details, yeah, that bores people. So one of the first things I did when I got back was I, I sat down with a fellow student, Mr. Ali Anbarian, and uh, he loves designing cars, so I gave him the opportunity to draw the first sketches of this car, and he did that, and you can see them up there. Those are the first sketches of the car we were gonna build. Now, together with my very hardworking team, my deputy, Jesse Siegel, and my computers guy, Julius Weinmiller, they worked around the clock to finally build the design of this car. That is the design of the car. We created that. We created that from scratch, from nothing. It doesn't look a lot like those first sketches Ali made, but that doesn't matter, because we created it. We created it, and we were gonna build that, and we were ready to build that. We tested it, we put it through all kinds of simulations, and it passed with flying colors. We had a car on paper. We were ready to start building. But then you have the problem of funds. Fundraising was not easy for us. I went to over 100 companies to ask them to give us funds for the project. I got rejected so many times, you guys have no idea. And uh, that doesn't matter, because eventually a few people did commit to the project. And eventually they gave the money we needed, and we had all the money we needed. So we were ready to start building this car, and we were going to build this car. Now, I'm going to tell you right now that there will be setbacks. There are always setbacks. That's part of life. Nothing will go as smoothly as you want it to go. I'm telling you this because that car, that you see the designs of up there, it's physically supposed to be here right now, but it's not. It's not physically here right now because we're running behind schedule. But that's life, that's okay. Because I know my team is gonna work incredibly hard to get it done by the race. And when we get to that race, we will be the first international high school in the world to compete at this elite level. And I am proud of that. And I am proud to say I created this opportunity. Now, we, I call myself an engineer because I am maintaining, designing, and building a structure and engine. So I call myself an engineer. I don't have an engineering degree. I don't even have my high school diploma yet, yet I can still call myself an engineer. And you have to remember, this doesn't only apply for engineering. This applies for almost everything people love to do, what you love to do. And when you do what you love to do the most, the pieces of the puzzle will start falling together you will realize that things will start coming together. I told you about how I took that position as fundraiser in my old school. Well, that was crucial when it came to sponsorship for this car. That small RC car I created, that was so important because that knowledge is easily translated to the actual real size vehicle. When we start doing the things we love to do and we create and take opportunities, pieces of the puzzle will start falling together. And remember, when we do enough of what we love to do, we will become great at it. Take risks, ladies and gentlemen, take risks. Don't regret, don't regret. Only regret the things you didn't do because you can learn from the mistakes you made. You cannot learn from the mistakes you didn't make. Don't be scared. Create your own opportunities. Now, that's the story about the opportunities I've had in my life so far. And I know these opportunities, they will help me in the future. But I wanna leave you all with one last thing. Don't wait for that opportunity to come knocking on that door. Knock that door down and create your own opportunity. Thank you very much.